Hello my dear student, welcome to EPG Part Sala. I am Anchal Srivastava from Department of Physics, Banaras Hindi University. Today we are going to discuss about module Scanning Electron Microscope known as SEM under the paper Nanoscience and Technology 2. After completing this module, the student will be able to learn and know about the historical background of electron microscope. They are also able to know what is the scanning electron microscope. They will learn few basic processes which show how electron interact with matter and what kind of information we will get. We will also know the construction and working principle of scanning electron microscope. How images are formed, how magnification can be made and what is the depth of focus. Definitely we will discuss about specimen preparation and what is the requirement of vacuum. A modern light microscope, often abbreviated LM, has a magnification of about 1000x and enable the eye to resolve object separated by 300 nanometer. As scientists and inventors, Tolted to achieve better resolution, they soon realized that resolving power of microscope was not only limited by the number and quality of the lens, but also by the wave number of light used for illumination. With visible light, it was impossible to resolve points in the object that were closer together than a few hundred nanometers. Using light with a shorter wavelength, blue or violet, gave a smaller improvement. Emerging the specimen and the front of the objective lens in a medium with a high refractive index, such as IL, gave another small improvement. But these measurements together only brought the resolution power of the microscope of just under 100 nanometer. Imagine yourself along in an unknown darkened room with only a fine beam torch. You might start exploring the room by scanning the torch beam systematically from side to side, gradually moving down so that you could build up a picture of object in the room in your memory. A Electron, a scanning microscope used an electron beam instead of a torch, an electron detector instead of eye, and the fluorescent screen and the camera as memory. Electron microscope are scientific instruments that use a beam of energetic electrons to examine objects on very fine scale. Electron microscope were developed due to the limitation of light microscope, which are limited by physics, physics of light. This required 10,000 plus magnification, which was not possible using current optical microscope. Electron wave is a unique me medium that can be used in imaging. By accelerating electron into high energy beam by high voltage, the wavelength of thus created is far shorter than white light. For example, for an electron beam produced from a 20 kV gun, the wavelength is only around 0 0.06 nanometer, corresponding to the resolution limit of 0.3 angstrom. Theoretically, it can be used to image a specimen as, as small as 0.3 angstrom. Most atoms are of the size of 2 to 3 angstrom. The combination of high magnification, larger depth of field, greater resolution, compositional and crystallographic information make the same one of the most heavily used instrument in academic and national lab research area and industry. The history. In this slide, I will discuss about the historical background of 
scanning electron microscope. The development of scanning electron microscope known as SAM began a few years after the invention of transmission electron microscope by Knorr and Ruska in 1931. But the commercialization of scanning electron microscope required about 30 years. Figure shows the history of initial development stage of scanning electron microscope. The first SEM image was obtained by Max Knoll, who is in 1935 obtained an image of silicon steel showing electron channeling contrast. Further, pioneering work on the physical principle of SEM and beam specimen interaction was performed by Manfred von Enrene in 1937, who produced a British patent but never made a practical instrument. The SEM was further developed by Professor Sir Charles Ortley and his postgraduate student Gary Stewart and was first marketed in 1965 by Cambridge Instrument Company. Let us learn a little more about scanning electron microscope. The scanning electron microscope is used for observation of a specimen surface. When the specimen is irradiated with a fine electron beam called an electron probe, secondary electrons are emitted from the specimen surface. Topography of the surface can be observed by two-dimensional scanning of electron probe over the surface and acquisition of an image from the detected secondary electrons. Characteristic information of a sample using SEM. The one is topography. The surface features of an object are how it looks, a texture, direct relation between these features and the material properties. The second one is the morphology, the shape and size of the particle making up the object, direct relation between these structures and material properties, their composition, the element and the compound that the object is composed of and relative amount of them, direct relationship between composition and material properties. Then crystallographic information, how the atoms are arranged in the object, direct relation between these arrangements and the material properties. The construction and working principle of scanning electron microscope which I want to show through this video. The scanning electron microscope, also abbreviated as SEM, is an instrument that produces a magnified image using electron instead of light to form an image. A beam of electron is produced at the top of the microscope by electron gun shown in the figure. The electron beam followed a vertical path through the microscope which is held and traveled through electromagnetic field and lenses, which focus the beam down towards the sample. The beam passes through a pair of scanning coil or a pair of deflecting plate in the electron column, the deflection the beam in XY axis. Once the beam hits the sample, electrons and X-ray are ejected from the sample. Detector collect these X-ray backscatter electron, secondary electron and convert them into signal that is sent to the screen similar to the television screen which is clearly visible here. This produces the final image. The SIM is used for cross-sectional analysis on devices like MOSFET, inspection of integrated circuit, etc. Why images are visible? The scanning electron microscope image appears as if we observed an object with the naked eye. We may intuitively understand the features of the object, 
However, the scanning electron microscope image often produced a contrast that is difficult to explain. To fully understand the contrast of ACM image, we must understand the principle of the formation of ACM image. Originally, microscopy was based on the use of light microscope and could provide a specimen resolution on the order of 0.2 micron. To achieve high resolution, an electron source is required instead of light as the illumination source, which allows for resolution of about 25 angstrom. The use of electron not only gives better resolution, but due to the nature of electron beam specimen, interacts there are variety of signal that can be used to provide information regarding characteristic at and near the surface of the sample. When the primary electron beam interacts with the sample, the electron loses energy by repeated random scattering and absorption within the teardrop shape volume of a specimen known as interaction volume, which extends from less than 100 nanometer to approximately 5 micrometer into the surface of the sample. The size of the interaction volume depends on the electron landing energy, atomic number of specimen and the specimen density. The energy exchange between the electron beam and the sample results in the reflection of high energy electron by elastic scattering, emission of secondary electrons by inelastic scattering and emission of electromagnetic radiation each of which can be detected by a specialized detector. The beam current absorbed by the specimen can also be detected and used to create images of distribution of a specimen current. Electronic amplifiers of various type are used to amplify the signals, which are displayed at variation in brightness on the computer monitor. Or for vintage model, on a cathode ray tube. Each pixel of the computer video memory is synchronized with the position of the beam on the specimen in the microscope and the resulting image is therefore a distribution map of the intensity of the signal being emitted from the scanned area of the specimen. In older microscope, the image may be captured by photography from high resolution cathode ray tube but in modern machines, they are digitalized and saved as a digital image. Secondary and backscattered electron. In this slide, we discuss about secondary and backscattered electron, how they actually form. Let us first about secondary electron. When the incident beam enters the specimen, secondary electron are produced from the emission of a balanced electron of a constituent atom in the specimen. Since the energy of the secondary electron is very small, those generated at the deep region are quickly absorbed by the specimen. Only those generated at the top surface of the specimen are emitted outside of the specimen. This means that secondary electrons are very sensitive to the surface. The difference in the brightness of the crystal surface is due to the difference of the incident angle of the electron beam. Thus, the secondary electron is used to observe the topography of the specimen surface. Let us talk about backscattered electron. Backscattered electron are those electron, those scattered backward and emitted out of the specimen. When the incident electrons are scattered in the specimen, they are sometimes called reflected electrons. Since backscattered electron possesses high energy than secondary electron, information from relatively deep region is contained in the backscattered electron. The backscattered electron are sensitive to the composition of the sample. The atomic number of the constituent atom in the specimen is larger. The backscattered electron yield is larger. That is, an area that consists of a heavy atom appears brighter in the backscattered electron image. Thus, this image is suitable for observing a compositional difference. SE are generated by three different mechanisms. SE1, 
AC2, AC3. This secondary electron are produced by interaction of electrons from the incident beam with the specimen atom. This AC are produced in closely a proximity of incident beam and thus represents a high lateral resolution signal. AC2 are produced by interaction of high energy backscattered electron with the specimen atoms. Both lateral and depth distribution characteristics of BAC are found by AC2 signals. AC3 are produced by high energy BSE with strike the pole pieces and thus solid object with the specimen chamber. Let us talk about the image produced by ACM. In figure, a surface morphology of a spider has been shown which is obtained through the scanning electron microscope. From ACM, image of the spider, we can clearly observe the features and morphology present on the spider. Similarly, magnified images of E. coli bacteria has been shown in figure B, from where we can clearly see the morphology of E. coli bacteria, which is not visible through the naked eye. These images clearly reveal the potential application of scanning electron microscope. Let us discuss the depth of focus. In the observation of a specimen with a substantial depth, if the focus is adjusted to top side, the bottom side may be out of focus. In such a case, if the range of range between upper and lower image blur is large, it is said that the depth of focus is large. Whereas, if the range between the upper and lower image blur is a small, it is said that the depth of focus is a small. Whereas, when the element electron probe is substantially angular aperture, angle is large, the image goes out of focus even if the focus is only slightly changed. In the case of optical microscope, where the probe scanning is not used for imaging, when the angle subtended by the objective lens of the specimen is small, the depth of focus is large. Whereas, when this angle is large, the depth of focus is small. Note that even when the image is blurred, this cannot be seen as a low magnification. However, when the magnification is increased, the image blur is found to appear. That is, the depth of focus is changed also by the magnification. Let us talk about magnification. When the specimen surface is two-dimensionally scanned by electron probe, a SEM image appears on the monitor screen by display unit. At this time, if the scan width of the electron probe is changed, the magnification of the displayed SEM image is also changed. Since the size of the monitor screen is unchanged, decreasing the scan width increases the magnification, whereas increasing the scan width decreases the magnification. The magnification is simply the ratio of the length of the scan C on the cathode ray tube to the length on the scan X on the specimen. For a CRT screen, that is 10 cm square. Therefore, the magnification m is equal to c by x or 10 cm by x. Increasing m is achieving by decreasing x. Magnified ACM images of spherical lead particle in secondary electron imaging mode have been shown in figure. Let us discuss the type of scanning electron microscope. The first one which is conventional scanning electron microscope with high vacuum. This machine is the most common type of machine. It requires a dry conductive sample which can be achieved by applying a thin layer of metal to the surface with a technique called sputtering. The sample must be able to withstand at high vacuum. This type of machine is used for routine imaging using either secondary electron or back scattered electron. These two detectors, secondary electron detectors and back 
scatter detectors are fitted to take the image and give its display on computer. Let us talk about the another scanning electron microscope which is of conventional in nature but with low vacuum. This type of machine is basically like conventional SEM but has the average in the low vacuum we can call it LV mode that the pressure can be adjusted in the sample chamber until the artifact of electron charging is removed from images. This charging artifact is the result of electrons from the electron beam building up in a non-conductive sample. The extra electrons then jump from the sample unpredictably causing line and streak on the image. You can have seen many times doing a scanning electron microscope that a line or a streaks come during the imaging. This is because of this thing. Alternatively, the unpredictable electron discharge repels the beam causing jumps in the image or the appearance of black patches. This means low vacuum scanning electron microscope can be used to image the surface of non-conductive samples. There no metal needed to be added on the surface for such samples. It is particularly useful for weaving polymers, biological samples and museum samples that cannot be changed in any way. Particulate samples and geological materials Imaging used backscattered electron. Backscattered electron imaging of non-conductive uncoated sample can provide the information about composition via the contrast of the image. Whiter region have a higher average atomic number than darker region. From here one can predict the composition. Let us talk about the third one which is called cryo ACM, cryo scanning electron microscope. Cryo stands for frozen. A cryo scanning electron microscope is a conventional SEM that has been fitted with a specific equipment that allows sample to be viewed in the frozen state. This is particularly useful for directly weaving hydrated or wet samples, delicate biological samples, hydrogels, food, biofilm, foams, fat, wax, suspensions, pharmaceuticals, and nanoparticles. The sample can be snapped, frozen outside the machine and then inserted in its frozen state are placed into the machine in an unfrozen state and frozen more slowly in the machine. Both can be possible. It is imaged using either secondary electron or backscattered electron. Frozen samples can also be fractured or cut during preparation to reveal internal structure. There is a new microscope known as environmental scanning electron microscope is also developed. This machine is designed to view a sample in its natural state without the need to desiccate. Sample temperature and specimen chamber vapor pressure can both be controlled allowing sample to be heated, cooled wetted or dried. This is an added advantage for all kind of samples, especially biological samples to study in this environmental scanning electron microscope. SEM is one of the most versatile technique and can be used to image morphology of the sample. It can image comp compositional and some bonding differences. Examine wet and dry samples while weaving them only in ECM, ESEM, 
view frozen material in cryo ACM, generate X-ray from samples for microanalysis. So student, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. SEM has been presented as a powerful imaging technique by which one can see the surface and topography of the sample. The electron interacted with the atom that makes up the sample producing signals that contains information about sample surface topography, composition and other properties such as electrical conductivity. During ACM inspection, a beam of electron is focused on a spot volume of the specimen resulting in a transfer of energy to the spot. To produce the same image, the electron beam is swept across the area being inspected, producing mainly such signals. This is called raster scanning. These signals are then amplified, analyzed, and translated into image of topography being inspected. Finally, the image is shown in computer this is all about scanning electron microscopy. Thank you very much.